Hi, this is Mike, and yesterday I received a Syntheno synthesizer in the mail. Syntheno is a little synth manufactured locally here in the Twin Cities, and I got one. Yes! So anyway, I, I really wanted to show um, controlling the Syntheno from code using the title live coding pattern programming language, which is a, it's not a language, it's an environment in the language of Haskell. Um, and you can use it to make music and other cool stuff. So uh, I want to show this in title, um, in addition to just showing a little quick overview here. So, so here it is just playing some sine waves. Uh, we can change the waveform to, um, we've got square, saw, triangle, sine. There's some other instruments in here as well. Um, I forget what there is. There's 12 waveforms total. Got a noise generator, as well as some drum samples for the groove box mode. I'm not going to show the groove box, but uh, uh, other things like uh, ADSR envelope control. It's also a pitch LFO. If you want to change the filter resonance, there's a toggle on the fourth button, and that the toggle will put each pot in a different mode to control. So we can change the filter resonance now with this, with the the, the original filter cutoff knob. Oh, what did I do? What did I do? Oh, I'm gonna reset here. I have no idea what I just did. All right, so there's our filter. We'll toggle it. So now we got low resonance, high resonance. Anyway, you get the idea. Oops, did I just bump the camera? Sorry about that. Um, and what else can we show? Um, eh, that's good enough for now. So I really want to show this from code. So title is, uh, by the way, I'll put links in the description for the Syntheno stuff as well as title. Um, yeah, so title has some experimental MIDI features. I added a Syntheno implementation of um, the MIDI stuff in title. So all of the change control stuff that's in the Syntheno manual here. So so here's the MIDI implementation of the, uh, of the Syntheno. So we've got all these control change uh, messages we can send. So everything in the with each of those pots we can control using MIDI. So I created a MIDI implementation of Syntheno and mapped uh, the control change numbers to uh, text parameter names that, that sounded good to me. And I can now use those in title. So, so here's a uh, title file. Uh, this is just some boilerplate code. I've got... Um, the Syntheno is a, a device ID number nine. So I am basically just saying on uh, for device ID nine, I've got four channels. Oh yes, the Syntheno has four MIDI channels and each channel can is polyphonic. This is badass because you can play so many notes with this thing. All right, anyway, so I've got four channels, K1, K2, K3, K4. I could name these things whatever I want in title. I'll just call them that. And so now we can play a MIDI note, MIDI note 55. I honestly don't know what MIDI note this is. All right, so now I think we're at uh, BPM 120 here. And I can add a couple more notes. So we are live coding right now. So kind of cool. Uh, and for those of you unfamiliar with title, we can even do some chords. So if I wanted to do, uh, I'm not even gonna try and remember the uh, an, an interval number in terms of MIDI notes here, but.
So that's kind of cool. It's just basic MIDI note on and off values. So now from code, we can control things like the waveform. And you have to kind of, um, so the waveform will accept an integer value between zero and one. So zero is a zero, one equates to a MIDI note value of 127. So you just have to kind of imagine turning the knob as a percentage. So if I do 0 0.1, that's like turning the knob, or actually if I do zero, that's having the, the, the uh, waveform knob all the way in the, to the left. And if I change this to 0 0.1, it's the next waveform. There's 12, so you have to, let's see, 1 12th. I don't remember, what's 1 12th? So all the waveforms available, it's like turning that, it's like turning that knob slowly. We can even get to the, the drum samples as well. There's the kick. And each of those drum samples is pitch sensitive, so you can do a kick pattern. That's pretty cool. And we can even change the waveform in a, in terms of, of a pattern here. So we could do something like this. Isn't really going to get into this, but we can even do some more complex things with uh, title as well. We can change the speed every three cycles. Uh, I'm, not <laughs> I'm not sure what else to try. Let's see. Let's do. Um, I am completely. Yeah, we could even change the waveform here. So freaking cool. All right, so all right, so so we can change the waveform. I'm just gonna move this, change this back to a, something like that. Uh, we can change the attack and release. And of course, we can change the pattern of those things as well. Even, yeah, I mean, you can, you've got all the features of the title, uh, kind of the mini language that parses the, these patterns and this, this syntax. You've got all the power of that in these control change params, which is pretty cool. All right, so let's just reset this stuff. So anything that's in here, we can we can change. So pitch LFO, the cutoff, um, all of that good stuff. There's in fact, let's, let's, let's just do that for fun. We can even uh, apply a sign function to this. Is the filter resonance, uh, and then yeah, pitch LFO. That's kind of another fun thing. Let's uh, put the cut off. I think it's pitch LFO rate and pitch. We can, you know, apply patterns to this. You get the idea. So that's pretty cool. But uh, the other thing that's really awesome is since this is polyphonic and we've got more than one channel, we can put a different pattern on channel two. Maybe like a bass thing. Ah. That's 
too low. Oh, you know what? Uh, I think the pitch LFO might affect both channels at the same time. No, I think I'm wrong about that. Let's, let's keep going. Yeah, it does. You can, you can hear the LFO. Um, it's been specified from the first channel. So if I get rid of this. Actually. So let's take this and set it to zero down here. Not quite sure what's going to happen. Let's see. So here, there's no LFO. And then if we put that pattern back. Oops. I shouldn't need to actually do that. Ah, shoot. I lost my pattern. Okay, yeah. So the LFO does not is independent which is good but now we've got two different channels so we've got uh, we can have a different completely different waveform going so we've kind of got a like a sub note here going on channel two might be hard, kind of hard to hear i'll raise it up a bit um so let's go oh, i take that back you, you, the lfo is interacting between the two channels so the LFO is global to the entire device. That's fine. Let's uh, reset this back to zero. All right, so I've got terrible sounding melody here. I honestly don't, I can't read MIDI in terms of note values. But now I've got two parts going. I could even add a drum part. So that's pretty cool. I, I honestly, this is just so amazing uh, that you can <laughs> have this much polyphony in a little tiny little synth device. It's pretty cool. And all right, so then of course I can then combine this with the sample based features in Title as well. So if I wanted to do some Title drum samples and or some samples for drums instead, I can go to uh, the Dirt synth, which I have running in the background here. So there you have it. You you can do all kinds of crazy stuff. So so this little synth from a live coding perspective is to me very powerful. You've got four channels, um, polyphony on each channel. You've got a lot of control over the sound with the the filtering, the ADSR envelope, uh, as well as the pitch LFO and filter LFO. I love it so far. It's really fun. I haven't even gotten to the groove box feature yet. Uh, there's also an arpeggiator which also, I have not, I've not really tried that from, um, from MIDI or from Title. Actually, you know what? We're gonna wing it. So let me, oops, let me reset the device. Put it on the in our arpeggiator mode here, and so now we're in our arpeggiator mode. I honestly have no idea what's gonna happen next. So if I start just playing this.
Oh, this is so sweet. Okay, so the Arpedi. Oh, there's a. Um, I how to stop this thing. Let's push the button. So, oh, damn it. There we go. Okay. So I think in the MIDI implementation, yeah, there's an all notes off, which I thought I implemented. Um, maybe there isn't a way to, to change that. Um, but the arpeggiator also has a note length and uh, a transpose control change, uh, which I have not implemented yet um but it looks like it, you know otherwise you can just play the arpeggiator like you know like with regular with regular patterns which is really cool oh. so one thought i guess the the bpm and the tempo of the arpeggiator bpm oh yeah here it is okay cool so there's a bpm setting as well so then I can get that matched up with the title BPM so like my title BPM is this and I could probably have an independent arpeggiation or an independent tempo from the arpeggiator case this is a blast <laughs> um yeah so that's that's about it there's also the groove box stuff which honestly i don't even know how to use that yet that's the the third mode of this um we've got basic synth mode which is what i was mainly using in the video here arpeggiator mode which is what i just did and then groove box mode which i i don't i couldn't even do it for you right now i don't know so uh, oh, the other thing is, let me put it back in synth mode. This really isn't a feature of the Syntheno at all, but um, I'm a ridiculous fan of reverb. So this thing just sounds amazing after you start adding some reverb and stuff in here. Um, get enough reverb it's one of it's my kryptonite so that's that's about all i wanted to show uh take a look at the synthino if you're looking for a affordable really unique uh synth kind of a diy flavor uh check it out i'll put the url in the description and uh if you're interested in title i'll put the links to that as well and i i can talk about title all all day so fire away with questions if you if you like so that is all thanks for watching